So welcome to my CEH version 9 material. This is chapter 6, enumeration. So it's always going to be funny with this chapter because I get people asking, well, what is enumeration? Like, I thought we already did footprinting. I thought we already did reconnaissance. So what is this enumeration? So enumeration is a way to gather detailed information way past scanning. We're, we're past the IPs and port number that are there. We're looking at what's up, what's down, uh, what can we connect to, uh, can we uh, ping, can we send art requests, can we uh, try some basic connectivity thing, uh, strings with SNMP, things like that. So one of the fun things is enumeration uses different protocols, not just uh, typical protocols used for scanning. Because scanning will use ping and ARP and things like that, while enumeration also uses things like ICMP, it also again does things with SNMP. This helps to create more a more effective overall of the network or picture of the network. And this kind of relies on a combination of things. It relies on a, a few automated methods and some manual methods. And what I mean by that is as we're scanning the network we start looking at things like TTL. And are we getting the appropriate TTLs? Are we getting the appropriate packet responses showing their Windows machine, they're showing that they're Linux machines? So the scan may be manual, but the actual dissemination of information from those scans could be automated. That way we do a quick scan and we try to determine the host OS. And determining the host OS could be part of the automation that's being built in. So there are some things there. So what else could you do with enumeration? You could be looking for like network resources. You could be looking at routing tables or routing information or even just uh, forwarding tables, depending if you're looking at a router or a switch. Maybe looking at DNS uh, material. Could be even seeing if DNS is updatable if it's not set to secure. Banners and applications using those banners, that's always a really big thing because a lot of services might have a banner so when you try to connect to see the banner you get the appropriate banner the information about that service its reversion things of that nature uh, users and groups is always a really good one what users have access what users don't have access now I'm not saying that with enumeration you're going to be able to determine all the things about the users and groups but I mean this is a nice great a great way to slowly start seeing the bigger picture of what user and groups that are out there. So that's always really fun. So as we start looking at the network-based resources, we can start looking at how to under, uh, uncover things. For example, maybe having a null session so that we could uh, extract information. We could be looking at targeting a, a SMB to see if we can pull information out of it what users can access it. Is it an everyone? Is it a domain users? What? We could start uh, enumerating Active Directory accounts or other type of directory service accounts. One of the last ones, which is always my favorite, this is my main area, is actually trying to target routers. Trying to target the route updates or route tables. A lot of organizations do not secure their router processes a router process thus you can actually then target the routers to manipulate the routing tables on the routers uh, it's very common to actually if you're doing like OSPF you getting hello uh, packets on the LAN side on the local side instead of going out to the interface that should be and then actually denoting the LAN interface as a passive interface. So, again, it always goes back to port numbers. You're going to have to know these port numbers. Port numbers of interest, things like 52 or 53 with UDP and TCP. That's a DNS. 53 for TCP is DNS, but it's specifically for zone transfers like understanding that TCP 137 is the NetBIOS name server which provides name resolution for NetBIOS. 
uh, understanding that TCP port 445 is SMB over TCP, or also known for directly host improves network access. So again, you, you kind of want to know what these ports do, because we need to go a little bit more, more in depth. Uh, port four, uh, port 3368, which that's the global catalog service associated with Active Directory. A lot of people get that confused with 3389, which is Active Remote Desktop. So again, lots of different ports that you're going to have to start slowly getting used to, because they do specific items. So NetBIOS. What is NetBIOS? This service was originally intended to assist in the access to resources on a LAN only, but it still exists. So because it's still there, it's a commonly exploited service because a lot of people leave it on. It's designed for a small network that is very vulnerable. There are a lot of exploits specifically exploiting NetBIOS. You can use this to extract all sorts of specific information, uh, names, SIDs, uh, operating systems, things of that nature. It is a legacy protocol, it is aged, and it's still available and it's still running on a lot of systems. I guess the most important one here is it's still available and it's still running on most Windows computers. So that's been one of the fun parts here is once you understand that it's there, you can start looking at ways to exploit it. So there's also a null, a null session that you can uh, deal with this with that BIOS because this feature is used to allow clients or any type of end device of uh, any type of connection with creating a session across the network. So we could have a null session that allows access to a system using a special account known as the null user. This account is used to reveal information about the systems, the system shares, uh, sometimes the appropriate account on that machine, sometimes their usernames, and sometimes, in certain circumstances, the password as well, or the hashes for those passwords, but that, that's a little bit more far-fetching. Exploiting the NetBIOS null session, I mainly use this to get things like uh, system shares and some basic accounts. That That's about it. So here's a typo, working with the uh, null session, but they put in I-U-L-L, -L, but uh, it's working within the null sessions because again we can uh, retrieve very specific information. User IDs, share names, sometimes security policy settings, but that's uh, that's more subjective. You can, sh or at least you should be able to pull the current logged in user. While XP and Server 2003 are no longer vulnerable in the null session attacks, certain uh, instances uh, Windows 7 and Server 2012, if certain conditions are met, they are still vulnerable. Patches don't fix this issue, and most hardening techniques won't keep it from being exploited. By having that BIOS there, this is a thing that can happen. So, using the null session requires a short list of commands. The main command is net, like net use, net view, net use, a drive letter, uh, net use, and the machine name and user. That's always been a good one because I've been able to use that to generate uh -huh. new users. So keep in mind, these are uh, to connect to a remote session. You can also use some of the net commands to create accounts. One of the next fun parts is actually extracting from SNMP. Because SNMP is Simple Network Management Protocol. Uh, more often than not, the uh, early version were all plain text, and a lot of people that deploy SNMP never bother to go to the newer versions where the uh, strings are encrypted. So that's always a fun one. Uh, SNMP is open source and can uh, inform administrators and things like uh, report to administrators, alerts, and 
configuration changes. There's a lot of tools that are there. But the fun one is a lot of admins don't fully understand it, so they implement it. That's it. They're good to go. They're getting alerts. They're happy. Not realizing that these alerts are being sent uh, in plain text. And sometimes they don't just set up the alerts, they set up the management functionality so you can go both ways. You can get alerts and still, still send commands. So what tools can you use to do an enumeration? They actually have a tool called BS Tools. It's a suite for enumeration. It's now owned by Microsoft. So that's always a good one. They can perform many different actions. And it's really good for both remote and local computers. Netcat is also a big one. Uh, Netcat is a fr uh, freeware. It's commonly used for uh, a backdoor type utility. You can use it to push files. That's always a good one. Uh, I mainly have used it for banner grabbing. Enumeration could also be Metasploit, which we have to have a section about Metasploit specifically, but Metasploit is a huge tool that we'll get more in depth with. And that's actually it for Chapter 6. Thank you.